Hello, and thank you for taking the time to join me for this talk, which is comprised of two parts, the UK general election and Putin's peace plan. The general election in Britain is a sham election, and I welcome how increasing numbers of Britons are seeing it that way. Britain is not a democracy. Instead, it is a tyranny and a kleptocracy. I will cite one example to demonstrate that Britain is anything but a democracy. The major parties, from the Conservatives, to Labour, to the Liberal Democrats, to the Scottish National Party, are fundamentally the same. Hence, Britain is a uni-party state. So, all of those parties support oligarchic capitalism, multiculturalism, immigration, LGBTQ, BLM, the COVID narrative, including the so-called COVID vaccine and lockdowns, the royal family, NATO, the collective West's foreign policy, the Ukrainian government, Israel, sanctions on Russia, Syria and Iran, Bill Gates, the ongoing eradication of the British national identity, so-called hate crime legislation, Big Pharma, a cashless society, digital IDs, digital pass passports, a technology-based surveillance society, the World Economic Forum, the ongoing attacks on the male and female genders, the nuclear family and Christianity, the so-called climate crisis, and the continuing erosion of freedom of speech and the right to protest. In a true democracy, it is simply impossible for all major parties to agree with one another on so many subject matters which are life-changing. Accordingly, only a born fool cannot see that the major parties in Britain form one party, the Uni Party, which is controlled by the British state, or the British establishment, or the British ruling elite. However you choose to describe those who rule, not govern, rule the UK. The Uni Party ensures that the forces which rule Britain remain entrenched in power. The politicians are merely puppets and useful idiots. And as regards the electoral system in the UK, this has been designed to guarantee that the parties which comprise the Uni Party are elected, thereby preserving the power of those who rule Britain. Furthermore, as regards the Reform Party, this party is controlled opposition, controlled again by those who rule Britain, to make people think that the country is a democracy and to provide a platform upon which people can vent their anger on matters such as immigration. Note, that reforms leaders have not said that they would deploy the British Navy to stop illegal migrants crossing the English Channel. And they have also not said that they would repatriate the millions upon millions of immigrants who have come to the UK legally and illegally since 1997. People who came to the UK without the consent of the British people. So, my advice to fellow Britons is to not vote, to not take part in what are sham elections. Do not play the game. Only a patriotic or nationalist revolution can provide freedom, justice and dignity for Britain and the British people. Now, turn into Putin's recent peace plan which includes Russia keeping Donetsk, Lugansk, Zaporozhye and Kherson, and for Ukraine to not be admitted as a member of NATO, and in return, Russia will implement a permanent ceasefire. 
So, do I think Putin is sincere in his peace plan? No, I do not. And I will tell you why. Firstly, the information war between the West and Russia over the war in Ukraine is even bigger than the military conflict between NATO's Ukrainian army and the Russian armed forces. With the West relentlessly saying, through its multi-billion dollar media industry, that Russia's invasion of Ukraine was unprovoked, that the Russians are committing genocide in Ukraine and whatnot, Putin, by presenting a peace plan, is attempting to put the ball in the West's court, so to speak, knowing that his initiative will be rejected, allowing him to depict the West as warmongers who have not the slightest inclination to stop the war in Ukraine. Now, secondly, and most important of all, Putin's so-called peace plan is not sincere because he knows that the Russian military campaign in Ukraine is the last and only opportunity for Russia to capture either all or most of Ukraine and thereby prevent forever the lands which comprise Ukraine becoming part of NATO and thereby safeguard Russian national security. Putin knows that a promise in writing or verbal by NATO and the Ukrainian government that Ukraine will not join the Western military bloc is worthless and more than worthless, dangerous. In fact, it would be a calamity for Russian national security. Why? I will tell you. Hypothetically speaking, let us say that the West accepts Putin's peace plan. Let us not forget that Zelensky and his government is merely a puppet of the West's. So, Russia keeps Donetsk, Lugansk, Zaporozhye and Kherson. A pledge is made by the West that Ukraine will not join NATO and the Russian military ends its campaign. Well, what remains of Ukraine, a very substantial size of land on Russia's soft underbelly, would still be a NATO colony or a NATO protectorate. Western military personnel and Western intelligence personnel, along with Western civil servants and Western business people, would still be in Ukraine, running the country. And whilst they are running the country, the Ukrainian military would be rebuilt and a plan would be conceived for Ukraine to join NATO, bypassing all of the requirements and procedures which are ordinarily in place for countries whose elites want to join the Western military bloc. In essence, Ukraine could join NATO literally overnight, without any prior mention of it in public by the West. In such a scenario, the West would achieve its long-term objective of enclosing Russia on its Western border with NATO member states. Ukraine would be flooded with NATO personnel and hardware, especially missiles and strategic bombers capable of carrying nuclear weapons. Ukraine would be protected by the whole of NATO in accordance with Article 5 of NATO's founding treaty. And as a result of the aforementioned, Russian national security would be severely compromised from which there could be no effective response from the Kremlin, in particular because Russia's strategic nuclear deterrent would be, would be seriously undermined. So much so that the nuclear balance between America and Russia would tilt decisively and permanently in favour of Washington. In short, Putin's so-called peace plan, if implemented, would be tantamount to Russia committing suicide. So, that is why I say Putin is not sincere as regards his peace plan. Instead, 
the Russian leader has carried out a gambit in the information war between the West and Russia over Ukraine. And I can only reiterate what I have said ever since the Russian military campaign began in Ukraine. Namely, that the minimum amount of land in Ukraine, which the Russian army will capture, will be all lands on the east bank of the Dnipro and all lands on the west bank of the Dnipro, up to and including the oblasts of Zhitomir and Vinitsa. Beyond Zhitomir and Vinitsa, and onwards to the westernmost part of Ukraine, I remain unsure as to whether the Russian army will advance there, owing to the very high levels of anti-Russian sentiment which exists amongst the populations in the regions there, such as Lvov. Thank you, as always, for listening.